Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create and use a material colour render element in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm using this scene I've set up here. If we open up the render preview, this is currently what the scene looks like when rendered. And we have a series of different materials we're using here for the water, rocks, glass and building environment. And we're going to be applying a material random colour render element to this and saving them out to allow us to edit each of these materials separately in Photoshop. So currently in my view, if we go up to the RGB icon here, we can see we just have the color render element and the alpha, which gives us a cutout of the objects and the background. Now what we're gonna do is we'll open up the V-Ray Asset Editor here, just on that little V icon, and we're gonna to go to the elements here. Under render elements, we can go down to the material random color and apply this to our scene. What this render element will do is it will apply a random color to each of the materials in our scene and will save out a separate render element, which is essentially a separate image that is rendered alongside our main image of our view, which we can then save out when we save that final render. So with that now added, I'm then gonna go and render out the scene. Now I've let the scene render out for a couple of minutes and if we go back up to that RGB color tab at the top left of the frame buffer, we can now find the material random color is there. And if we select this, you'll then see a preview of that material random color. Now it might be slightly dark and this is happening because I have display corrections added to my view. With the standard RGB, if I turn those off, you'll see it'll be very bright and that's because we've got some quite bright lights in the scene but the material random color will look more accurate with that turned off. But don't worry too much about that. The preview we see when we have those display corrections turned on will actually be different from the final saved file when we save this image out. So once we're happy with the render and it's got to a point which it's smooth enough for us to save, I'm just gonna stop that render there and we're just gonna save out those images and we can save all of them at the same time, the RGB, the alpha and the material random color, just using this tab up here, the save all image channels to separate files setting. So if we hit that, I'm just gonna save these as JPEGs and we're just gonna call them image for now. Now those are saved, we can see each of those separate image files have been saved here. We've got the alpha, we've got the main image there, and then we've also got our random material color here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load these into Photoshop now, so we're able to use the random color to edit our original image. To open all of these files simultaneously, I'm gonna to go to the file, scripts, and load files into stack option. Once here, we're gonna to go to the Browse tab, locate our images we want to load in, select all three of them and hit Open, and then hit the OK button. And what this would do is it will load each of those images into a, a single Photoshop file, and they'll be stacked one on top of the other, as we can see in our layers here. So we have the alpha, I'm gonna move that to the bottom. We have our main image, and then below that, we've got our material random color. From this point, I then usually select these base images, put them in a new folder in the bottom right, and call this base. And this will just be my base file here. What I'll then do is select that material random color, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and click and drag that up to the very top of the image. So we've got it sitting just above the rest of our images there. I'm then gonna turn this off and on whenever I need to use it to select some key parts of the image. From this point, we can then use the material random color to essentially select different parts of our image based on their materials. So let's say we wanted to edit the window and the glass we have of our building here. What I can do is I can select the magic wand tool, or we could go to select and select color range. And with this tool selected, we can click on an area of the image to select just that particular color in the image. Now, if you have the contiguous box ticked on, which it will be by default, when you select an area such as this green area, it will just select the area that it's kind of touching. Whereas if you have this box ticked off, 
it will select all of the green areas in the whole image here. So make sure you've got that contiguous box ticked off when you use this tool in order to be able to select all of the areas which that color applies to. If you're finding you're getting little artifacts in your selection like mine is here, we might need to turn down this tolerance value and we can put it to a lower value which should hopefully get rid of some of those artifacts. And you can just tune that to whichever color you're using. And there you go, a tolerance of five is now selecting just that window. Once we've got that selection, and on this particular example, we're just gonna use the window for the time being. I'm gonna then turn off my random color ID. We're gonna make a brand new folder called window with that selection still applied. And then with that folder selected, I'm then going to go down here to the mask tool, which looks like a kind of white square with a black circle in the center. And with the selection of the window and the folder selected, we're going to hit that mask tool and it will create a mask on the folder. And the mask should match a kind of small view of the image with a black, any area that's being masked and white of the area you've selected. What this then means is that in that folder, I can add a color. And if we start painting a color, it will just affect that particular area that we've selected. So what this allows us to do is that we can then tweak and fine tune certain aspects of this area. I could kind of add a color tint to the window, for example. We could sort of tint it green if we wanted to, make it slightly darker. And it will only affect that particular area we've selected. So we could go through, we could go back, to our material random color. We can select the rocks this time. I can make a new folder called rocks. Apply my layer mask again, and then we can do the same. So essentially what the material random color allows you to do is it allows you to isolate and identify each material rendered out in your image, and then you're able to edit those materials specifically from one another. So we can have very dynamic tweaks on each of these materials and start to work up our image in this way. And here we can see how that technique has now been applied to all of those folders and all of those different aspects of the image. And if we go back to our base image, we can just hold down the Alt key and press the little visible icon here to see what it looked like before and then after there. So here you can see the power of using that material random color to isolate and select each of those materials in our image and then allow us to edit those individually from one another to then post-produce and bring to life our scene. Thank you for watching this video and if you want to watch any of our videos on rendering techniques or post-production techniques in Photoshop and Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.